he hooked up with Michael and they went to Costa Rica and left the kids with her. And uh, it all worked out. And I, he's, Michael says that I'm sitting here smugly judging her. Shut up, Michael. Michael, shut Won't you? You're being a little this smug is, there for someone who's on the side of a house somewhere with, with birds <laughs> hold on, hold and on, dogs on. barking. I heard a stranger walk by a minute ago. Don't be rude to me and cut me <laughs> off. I let you trail on for three. Five, I, I don't know how many stories of nonsense. You know what was you surprising? Thought, hey, that was a good idea. Surprising is that the conversation was better after the fight. Yeah. Like yeah. unironically better. I am like, like literally yeah. better. There's a certain reluctance. Gosh, this is going to be hard to take. And I don't know if this is the right audience to tell you, but I'm just going to tell you anyway, and you can make what you will of it. Mm. There's a certain reluctance that human beings have of the narcissism that is natural to being an individual. Not I'm better than you, but I'm an individual and I don't need to agree with you on everything. It's real hard for people, especially in this competitive society, real hard for a person to figure out how to be a person in the midst of a society. It's tough. And people, people feel ashamed or embarrassed. And I just don't think there's any, they don't need to. I think it's, uh, I think that's a uh, unnecessary ill of this unspoken expectation of conformity and people don't want to do it people don't want to people don't want to they want to be themselves and not be ashamed of it well that's hmm. true but there are some things like behaviorally like if you're eating like shit all the time like you should feel bad about that if you're why like because <laughs> it's, it's unhealthy and it's gonna but, but who says that you have to be healthy. If somebody wants to eat like shit for a while, why shouldn't they? Because it's it's a feedback loop loop of negativity. Like you're you mess up your your hormones when you get fat, and then that makes you want to go you, into food more, and then that becomes a source of comfort. And it's kind of like the longer you stay in the hot tub, and that comfort, the harder it is to get out. Getting fat is wonderful, my friend. It's it's a great time <laughs> to get fat, but then you get fat, and you look at yourself as fat, and you go, my God. It's my circumstances that have caused me this via my, my circumstances being acting out in a way that's unhealthy. And so in that way, yeah, like you do I have to kind of take some. But I hear that, Taylor. I'm trying to find like a common ground sure. here. And it's like, ah, so the problem with eating badly isn't that you're getting unhealthy. It's that you're not meeting your goals. If your goal is to be healthy and you're eating badly, then you feel bad about not achieving what you're going for. If your goal is to be fat and ugly and you're eating badly, then you're <laughs> nailing it. <laughs> Dude, I nailed it for a while. <laughs> Dude, I just think I just think life carries people through different periods where sometimes you do eat like shit and that's fine and you'll get over it. And there's sometimes when you're addicted to beer or addicted to whatever, and you get through it. Like there's this, there's this trust, like there's this, it's everything now. And man, dude, that just ain't the way life is. The, the only way that we can, the only thing you can change now is the perspective to recognize that you don't know anything and that everything that we're doing is learning. And if we can do that and be gracious with ourselves and not think that, oh, we do know everything or we ought to be able to do things, if we if we could do them, we would. And if you're that, someone who's who's motivated like you to do this and share this, that that makes sense. Like you clearly have a lot of passion for it. Do you ever see people who maybe take that message negatively and go, oh, I almost nihilistically like, oh, there's nothing. None of this matters. Who cares? I may as well get fat and be stupid, and uh, I'll just, I'm just a stardust moat of whatever in the end. Because I do know people who, who go down that road of the, oh, nothing matters at all. Fuck it. And it's like that, that usually people who believe that aren't very happy. Well, what, you, what is the alternative? To force people to believe something that they are going to just say they believe, even though they don't? What I'm suggesting no, is. It would, be to, it would be to take meaning in, in, those close to you, your friends, your family. But but how can you get other people? To I'm just do trying that? to think of a non-religious thing. Well, you wouldn't have to, if if you're in your own community with your friends, your family, people who are 
who are like living more communally, people who do that, like even going so far as an example of the Amish, like they're much happier working and focusing on things in their immediate vicinity instead of doom scrolling on Twitter, looking at horseshit nonsense that's just there to, to upset you. I always have, I always question that poll. Did they ask the women how they were feeling and the kids? No, nor should they. It's not only the, only the guys, right? Only like, those bearded guys. Okay. Thought so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, do you think there's a risk of that, that, that some people could take that the wrong way that, Oh, everything's meaningless. Who cares? Yeah, of course. And I felt that way. And if anybody's honest, they felt that way. Sure. And so what are we afraid of? Look, I just trust in life that you're going to have some moments where you're like, what the fuck is going on? And and is this even worth it? And to act like you don't is just to mislead people. Look, everybody's going to have these moments where you're like, God damn it. I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I don't even know if I'm up for it, man. It's all right. Look, ain't nothing wrong with you. You ain't done nothing wrong. You ain't got to fix nothing. This is this is life, man. But there's a lot of a lot of people trying to tell people that it ought to be this way when there ain't no fucking way for it to be that way all the time. So you're you're coming down on more against there being an idea of a a total edict of what is happiness, what you need to do in order to achieve this happiness. You think it should be more subjective with a understanding that it is because that's what what is kind of odd about it to me is like yeah it's just like it's great that nothing matters like i didn't no, say nothing I, matters i think if i if i'm reading michael's vibe right it's that he's accepting for where you are right and if you're fucking hard driving jocko wilnick getting up at 4 a.m every day to do whatever then <laughs> yeah. fine that's that's how you are the are you if you're nothing that's matters but we're thing. stardust and you're just stuck there for a couple mm -hmm. days a couple months a couple years then that's okay too everything's okay i think is the vibe we're getting there'll be another stage Dude, of course, if you're one of those Stardust people, yes, you're annoying as fuck, but hey, <laughs> but yo, you're, you're going to get through it. Yes, you are. Un, you are you un, won't be that guy forever. Trust you're, us. You're We're finding common and nobody wants to hang out with you, but you'll get through it. <laughs> and if you're the Jocko Willett guy, then dude, no dude we need people like you. Either. We need Jesus people Christ. like you who are fucking hard charging yeah. leaders. And wherever you are, yo. The thing to, to understand is life is good to you. Look, there's there, look, guys, my, my battery's dying. I don't know where the fuck the com laptop computer is, but look, I just wanted to say this is the main thing that, that is important mm -hmm. to say is that this our society needs a myth that people can live by. A myth that makes them think of life as more than just a fucking algorithm or a bunch of fucking mathematical equations. That's a true. myth that captures our fucking souls and gives us a chest to live from instead of living when a society of people without chests, without souls. And so what I'm suggesting is that we see life as beautiful enough to contain both the beauty and the ugliness. That, that, that beauty, that life, that, that the myth that we see life by, even if someone makes such a horrendous uh, thing, I'm going to kill the children, that we understand that life is bigger than that threat. For example, in my ketamine trips, I was like, these are the things we're going to work out during this trip. This is, that, I wrote some pre-questions down in my journal. I thought them through. And then before I lost the answers, I wrote down my answers. And I refer, I even look back on them every so often, every couple of weeks months i'm like you know what did i think at the end like, you know what that was a good point because my my things were like hey i should appreciate my wife because these are her good qualities this is how she likes to have her bucket filled this is what my colin my, my son his name is colin um th this is you know how he likes to have his bucket filled and what we should do with him and my daughter those were the things that make my wheel turn and i feel like you're happier in a more <sighs> artistic ambiguous less defined type place like you you weren't looking for action items but action items are what brings me happiness that's how i get shit done awesome so that's the difference between us i guess no man i'm i'm sorry i i'm, I'm just not communicating well because what i'm saying is there ain't no difference is you saw the path to joy for you 
Mm -hmm. This is this is what I'm trying to say is like th life is life is the direct experience of joy. Sometimes joy is painful. Sometimes joy is chaotic. Sometimes joy doesn't make any sense. I, I'm tr what I'm trying to say is this is the experience of psychedelics puts us in to the direct experience of what life is before it's uh, polluted by all of the expectations that we've been taught to have of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was the, the pathway to joy and the way you just explained it was definitely the, the easiest to understand what you're putting down uh, of you. the way you've done it. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. And yeah, the the path to joy thing you said, that, that does make sense. Like, it doesn't really matter which option it is. It's just mitigating factors and handling this human condition of the shared emotions we all have. Dude, look, each one of us is so individual and the way that we interact with this world is so infinitely unique. And and yet each one of us is trying to do something very similar. Woody comes up with action items. I do something completely different. Kyle goes and parties and Taylor is doing his thing. All very different, but all with the same goal, which is the experience of life, which would which I would call joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what I'm trying to say is there's a difference between that and the acting like it that we've been taught to do through the self-help industry where you're supposed to stand in front of the mirror and tell yourself all these things and be positive all the time. And that, 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 that. yeah, that is not the same. And you're saying that's just going to set you up for more Delusion. negativity because Delusion. you're going to be like, Oh man, I'm telling myself in the mirror to be happy and I'm not happy. <laughs> I must be a stupid retard. Who's not doing it right. Everybody else on this forum is, is reading how to stay happy forever by Dr. John uh, thief. And it's going to work, you know, uh, Dr. John Huckster here. With, <laughs> yeah. My, my nonsense I, book. To be this leads to me to ask Taylor. I, I, Taylor, question for you. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you decided to use psychedelics to get your emotions right, whatever mm -hmm. that means for you. What do you think that process looks like? Are you a come up with the correct action items person like me? Are you a party guy like Kyle? Are you a I don't know, more I, I, think I was trying guy? If I was trying to do it with the goal, like – if I was doing it and my goal was not to have fun and be silly and the goal was like, I'm going to try and work through some stuff, I would want a list because I don't have any experience with LSD. And so mm -hmm. I would be worried like I'm going to do it and then I'm not going to focus on the right things or I'm not going to actually work through stuff. And so even if I made a list that I didn't look at once through the whole thing, at least writing it down and having that be top of mind would like make me feel more game plan-ish going into it. And it would also set my mind in the correct way to not be in like goofy fun mode. Because if I just kind of took it like the, haphazardly, I could imagine myself just having a fun, silly time. Like I'd, if I'd, I'd want to be purposeful with it. I, I, I like the when, the, when you broke down how you did it with the ketamine, I was like, I think that's like almost exactly how I would do it. Okay. Hmm. And so, but maybe, and you know, it could be a thing that I do that once and then be like, that was fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? I, I, I didn't need to write that shit down. It was already top of mind. And you so, of what? course, it came up. I, it's a lot to... I, with ketamine, you got six doses, right? So there were six trips that you took. Um, most of them were as I described. I'm not lying. One of them... Like, I have my computer next to me, and it's playing this bioral music. It's, I didn't even know what that was beforehand. Mm -hmm. And I've got my headset on, my scented candle, my weighted blanket. And I am just in mentally some sort <laughs> of zone. dry, happy, slip and slide of joy as I process all this sort of thing. Uh, Michael, you're oh, like... We lost your, your audio, Michael. Yeah, I think it's working now. You're like in, a, in an adult womb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bad, actually. But on one of the trips, so I've got my computer next to me, and it's an Apple. It texts. And I just text my wife, blow me. And <laughs> <laughs> so 
She does. And then that led to more and more and more. The journal afterwards is triple X rated. It, it like so that that was what I did with one of my trips. And afterwards, you'd think it'd be great. The, what's that? <laughs> that's what I do with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's Fuck, I'm not learning anything. I'm just getting my dick sucked again. <laughs> but but for me. I actually felt a little guilty afterwards. And I looked like, down and saw uh, the face of God throw to me. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, after, for me, like what, what happened between my ears was I was like, you know, you kind of slacked this session. You didn't make any progress on yourself. Uh, you just you just had sex. <laughs> so uh, you know, maybe you're wired differently. Where you where that's a win, but for me, it somehow. Well, Seemed well, like maybe a tie. Yeah. Oh, where where are you trying to get to? It's trying to be in a like out of depression. Depression sounds um uh, more extreme than I think I had. You're trying to get out of like you know the doldrums, like seasonal affective disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 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 might have been it, or it might have been you know a strong are version. You, are of you that. out of it? Yeah, I've, most of the time. When when do you notice yourself feeling ways that you don't want to? Um, it's not common. I would say that, like, like I mentioned earlier in the show, it might manifest itself as me overreacting to little problems. Like, oh, did I strip a bolt? That is, just get out your, you know how to deal with this. Just stay level, work the problem, solve the problem. Don't go pouting your feet or throwing a tool. Now you're just being an idiot. What what's wrong with you? Why are you not the best you? So that's the conversation that happens when something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, or, or um when I don't you, know. Maybe maybe I've got nothing. So I'm retired mostly. I do this. I work I work 5 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh um you know, maybe I'll just wake up without a purpose one day and be like, you know, like this, I shouldn't, I should be psyched, right? Like if life is a vacation, why aren't you happy? So like that sort of thing but, will but make But who's me, asking the question? Me. Right? Like I'll be. But, but hold on. Who's asking the question though? Me. So, so I'm not living up to my own expectations. Of, but, but, of, but of course you are. <laughs> because you... Oh, you could only you're only you could do that. So like what I'm saying is that the discrepancy you have is something that's made up. You like you've made up this idea that there's a problem when you're doing everything you want to do. But I mean, in a way, kind of like perception is reality, right? So in in Woody's mind, if that's a big source of stress and concern for him, then it's it's to him it's real it's as real as like stress over a real problem like with the, if his back patio is fucked up or, if if know. you say hey <laughs> that's my problem and so i just <laughs> just looked over there and, oh, yeah, I'm fucking what are you gonna do with that is, hey i want Taylor, to you're sorry. not meeting my expectations by the way <laughs> sorry I, I like my friends with good back patios <laughs> are we <talking laughs> paving stones or like what are we gonna do <laughs> we'll figure it out okay if what you're saying is i want to have a reason to be stressed and these are the ones i'm coming up with then i say great oh that's interesting no but I, I say hey you don't have to and if you're being honest with yourself then you'd say hey you know what i'm just looking for reasons because i feel like i ought to be stressed and i can't tell you why but god damn it i'm just going to come up yeah. with reasons no matter what you say and well, I'm that's infinitely that's true and i do that all the time with like catastrophic thinking for no reason and i'll i have the wherewithal in my mind to be like i know this is silly and you're being catastrophic and you're worrying about things that aren't going to come to fruition but the worry in my head is real you know like the the concern is real i can push it down and it'll sincerely go away sometimes and then it'll come back and it'll be stupid things you're right you can obsess over a back patio being fucked up anything mm -hmm. The guys, back patio is a pretty guys, big problem. You're really I'm, fucking up. I'm concerned about this patio. It's all I can think of. Stop mentioning it. <laughs> I'm it. Oh, fuck. But like it, like those are, they're real to me, you know. And I know what you're. I totally get what you're saying. That it shouldn't be. Of course, you're living like it shouldn't be, but it, it is. Be. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I'm saying it should be, and there ain't nothing wrong with it. 
<laughs> I'm saying it's nothing wrong. Look, what is it that you guys are trying to do? You're trying to have this thing where nothing ever bothers you. Is this I, this ideal that you have of yourself? Is this this thing where you're un, you're placid, never moved, never phased by anything? No, nobody mm. wants to live like that. What you're saying is a, a ridiculous notion of an ideal that you would never want to accomplish, even if you could. So all you have is an unconscious process going where you come up with reasons to be down on yourself because you have this standard that's impossible to achieve and nor would you ever want to accomplish it because it's this circular thing that you haven't ever examined to say, what the fuck am I doing? Instead, you just come up with all these reasons that it's this way and keep doing the same thing until you say, God damn, this don't make no goddamn sense. Why the fuck do I keep doing this? And just free yourself to not have to talk about it anymore and talk about something else. And this is why I bring up the thing of narcissism, because I think we get very self-conscious when we want to talk about something that ain't in the group consciousness. See, the reason that it's okay to talk about this is because everybody's talking about this. Everybody's talking about how to make yourself better. This is a totally socially acceptable thing to talk about. You can come up with all the reasons that you're bad because that's something that everybody can agree on. Mm -hmm. The minute you start saying, hey, man, I don't want to talk about that shit anymore because it doesn't do any good and it don't make no difference. Let's talk about something else. Now he's sound, now he's starting, starting, sound, now he's starting to sound like a weirdo like me. You know, it's like genuinely helped in like like many years into adulthood was mm -hmm. like a, a concerted effort. Like when I would fuck something up because my instinct in my head always to be, was to just like you fucking retard, you fucking idiot. Everyone else can do this. You're the one who's fucking this up, you moron. You absolutely like it wouldn't matter what it was. It was just like that my instinct was like, God, you is that the voice you hear? Idiot. That is so mean. I, I used to hear that and I used to like <laughs> I had to like take a time like in the like past four or five years and or, like and be like, no, no, you're not a fucking idiot. Like just handle it. Set Such it's a superior okay. tone that your like, that your imagination has as well. Like, like, what's he done? That's so that's so impressive. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the, you're the, the fucking idiot here, and then I'm back in the mix. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like that's that, funny that's too. Another, I, that's a hugely beneficial thing. Is like you fuck up or something doesn't go your way. Like I had to consciously do this. Like I do it more second nature now, but I would like have to consciously stop negative thinking and be like, stop it. Like you're not being some drill instructor in your head correcting a negative negative reinforcement isn't going to work here like you need to you know fix whatever the problem is because you want to fix it organically because you want because you desire that it fit, be fixed whether it's weight loss or whatever and even when i do fuck up with something having a mindset of like hey like and i know that michael doesn't like the gratitude stuff like the the, the silly over the top gratitude stuff but like just like being organically appreciative of what you have and like being whole minded of it of like am i really gonna allow this to poison my mind today no i won't i'm gonna look at you know the house i'm so blessed to live in i'm gonna call my grandma i'm gonna call my dad i'm gonna you know talk to my brothers like and you go through and you do stuff like that and it's markedly markedly yeah. better yes so anyone who's not anyone who has that voice in your head i know what that's like and you don't you're not improving yourself by by humoring it, be nicer to yourself in your head. That's what I don't like is I the like circular negative thoughts about things you can't change. That's right. Like, that's right. Like that that's, that's the right. that's the poison. That's right. Like, that's like right. you know, just just things that are out of your complete control. There's and like, how do you, you could have turned how do you left? Stop doing that. Like, how do you, you, how how do you stop machine. those thoughts? How do you stop yeah. those thoughts? Ayahuasca, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the the way that you stop them is now of course microdosing does help it it does but mm -hmm. it also helps to not take them seriously and to not have this mm -hmm. idea look this is the idea that is the big fucking booby prize trap that everybody's got their fucking tongues lapping out of their mouth for is that this is going to make you better mm-hmm Oh, you, you know what? This one is going to make you better. And can I tell you, every time you fall for it, you're just fucking retarded. Because yeah. ain't nothing going to make you better. Ain't nothing going to make nobody better because you're just a human being and there ain't nothing that's going to make you better. And every time we fall for it, that's the pain that we experience. It's not because you ain't got enough willpower. It ain't because you don't have enough discipline. It ain't because you don't get up early enough. It's because you fell for the same fucking trick. 
that something was going to make you better instead of recognizing that everything's goddamn all right right now, just the way it is, just the way it is. And this is the way that you can live your life without having to wait for something to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't the know. First, I like that. And the first step is drugs. <laughs> I, I like high expectations. I like being mean to me and nice to everybody else. Like that, I feel like is a way to get shit done. You can achieve. Do that. Um, works this idea you. that everything is fine the way it is, as opposed to everything could be better and needs improvement. I get that. I, no, I'm no, hearing no, me. No, it's no, like, it's not circumstances can be improved, but you can't be improved. There's a difference here. Of course, yeah. circumstances can be improved, but you can't be improved. Yes, you can make more money. Yes, you can have a better wife. Yes, you can have better kids. Yes, you can do everything better, but you can, you can have a younger wife, I should say. You should have, you could have a whatever, but you can't, you can't categorically can improve yourself as a human. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't become a better human because all you're doing is sliding the scale of fucking of of uh judging it you can't become a better person you don't think people can can become better over time better at like, what? well i guess it would depend what 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 do you quantify as like better like when you're saying That's better exactly what do you right. mean you can't become a better person look can you become better at practicing search and virtues yes can you become better at basketball yes can you become better at driving? Yes. But can you become a better person? No, because that's what you are by nature. There's this fucking tricky thing that people think, oh, well, if I start meditating a lot, I'm going to become better in some way. No, you're just going to become better at sitting there and trying not to think. But you're isn't not going it, to improve you in any fucking way. You if you better. are improving yourself in virtuous ways, like if someone is becoming kinder and more patient and treating people better, and they do that in a sincere way. So let's say in their youth, they were not like that. And then they're fucking 48 or whatever, 49, ancient, ancient old man. Mm. And uh, <laughs> and all of a sudden they start being polite they start to being patient and polite and kind. <laughs> like I would say that person, like maybe they softened up, they got better. You would say maybe just a, that they're not better. I'd say they're different than they were. And each way that we are is perfectly suited for th that situation. The, the environment creates the organism. Whatever situation you're in, th the way that you are is perfectly suited to that. What I'm trying to say, guys, is that there's this idea of the way that you should be. And if you could just be that way, then you'd be okay. If you could just be the way that you ought to be, then you'd be happy. And that is not true. The way that you are is the way that you want to be. And Woody, if you want to accomplish everything and fucking climb 14ers and fucking build skyscrapers, that is the beautiful fucking way that you are a human being. But if you're going to expect everybody to be like that, you're going to be very disappointed. Nor right. would you want it to be because then it would take the shine from what you are because you get to look down on people who aren't like you and rightfully so because they don't accomplish the I think you missed the part about mean <laughs> to be and nice to you. That's the target. <laughs> <laughs> you really painted me as mean to strangers and that's not who I aspire to I'm, be. Not, I'm, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. I, like to, I had to get a fair motor so I could truly look down on lesser <laughs> men. <laughs> Losers. This is my hard work persona. Bitch. <laughs> These idiots aren't even flying around high out of their minds on ayahuasca. <laughs> Learning truths up. about the universe in a no-fly zone over school. <laughs> Woody's up there fighting the Luftwaffe three days a week. <laughs> I, I understand part of the you know self-improvement and like betterment stuff, but I just don't agree with the I guess the virtuous part of it. Like someone who is in their 60s who is become a kinder patient or, or more patient, like better person, more considerate. Like, I don't know how else you could describe that other than someone becoming better. Like they're, they're treating the people around them in a way that, you know, you, you objectively, you want to treat other people how you want to be treated. That's just kind of a, a rule of thumb. And so if you go your first 30 years of life, not abiding by that at all, being a real scum fuck, and then you have uh, an awakening, like I really, I think so that person's would you a say would you tell that person that the first 30 years of their lives were wasted no definitely not well then neither would i i would yeah. say that they were being exactly 
who they could be at that moment. And they couldn't be, they might become a better, better company. They might become better conversationalists. They might be better at becoming friends. But guys, do you see, don't you see the fucking trap door that you're standing above when you're trying to get better because it's never going to end? You're, and look, if you want to play that game, by all means, keep going. Keep trying to perfect yourself until you die, please, by all means. But if you don't want to have this noose around your neck of never being able to be able to say, hey, man, I actually accomplished something, then recognize that it's just a game that you are creating the rules of. What, whatever way that you're going to say I'm better is a way that you're judging it 100%. So you're both the judge and the subject, and it's just a circular thing. I, I mean, if it were truly subjective and all actions and emotions had an equal outcome, I would agree. But I would argue that people who treat others kindly are happier internally than people who treat others cruelly. And in that way, improving yourself, making yourself better through intentional decisions about your behaviors is absolutely possible and should be encouraged. But, dude, that's that's what you're saying should be according to you. Look, there are people like Bill Gates in the world who I, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know how you become like this person. I don't know yeah. that. I, 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 whatever motivates him. I, look, I don't know anything about him, but at some point you got enough money. And clearly not <laughs> because I don't <laughs> understand that. You see? So whether I think it should be or people should be happy or whether they should be virtuous, whether I think it should be or not, it ain't never going to be that way. And there True. are going to be people who are going to be assholes and God damn it. Good thing for them because that's what makes life like it is because what you're trying to do is argue with reality in all of these th ways where we're trying to improve ourselves. We're trying to say, well, God damn it. I should have, instead of getting my dick sucked, I should have done this instead yeah. during this fucking trip, which is insane. When you think all you're doing is arguing with reality for what to Prove a standard that you made up that is in contradiction to what actually happened. Do you see the insanity of this? This is fucking. I, I don't think it's all. I don't think it's necessarily made up. Like especially the virtue part, which I am sticking on. We are social animals, and it's objective that we engage better and are healthier in societies when we are honest and true and and respectful and kind and patient. Like these things are all good. These are objectively good things for people to practice. Nope. I would not agree with that. It is not objectively good for you to be kind if you are being threatened with violence. Well, that wouldn't be kindness. That would be responding to a threat. Kindness yeah. would be going out of your way to treat someone in a way that's genuine and offer assistance or help or being there if they're in an emotional I had the same initial response as Michael, but I, I, finding oh. little corner cases doesn't make his statement incorrect, right? Like, I, my thing was, well, what if you're a drill sergeant? You're supposed to be mean. That's not. Taylor is saying these things are virtues by and large, even if there is a little spot where it's not always appropriate. Yeah, well, yeah. there's uh, all things are virtuous though. All things, all things that happen hmm. are virtuous. Was well, the no. Holocaust virtuous? Not all things. Are, if if everything's virtuous, not nine eleven virtuous. Like like you you keep saying all things are this and nothing is that. You've got these absolutes. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And like, I understand that that sounds kind of shitty. What I'm saying is. I'm, I don't. I don't know the word for it, but yeah. everything that happens has to be accepted. Maybe is the better way to say it. And in, if we want to live sanely in life, it it can't be. Hey, that shouldn't have happened. Well, whether it should have happened or not, it did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, if I could rephrase that, it it almost sounds like acceptance is the linchpin for peace, inner peace for right? sanity. Like, really, for for sanity. living for okay. living in reality. For Those things the are world, the best yeah. inner peace is maybe a better yeah. phrasing is what I was going for when accepting I, the things you can't control. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's got me thinking a little bit like I don't like accepting the things I can't control. I like trying as hard as I can to see how close I, you know, how much I can mm -hmm. do. Maybe yeah. I don't always live up to that, but that's who I aspire to be. Yeah. If you've got a limited amount of like brain juice, though. Just seems yeah. silly to to devote any of it to man. I wish my feet weren't hairy. Like either get the electrolysis or just don't, Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew that one wasn't hypothetical. <laughs> I've seen them. <laughs> oh God, I look like a werewolf. Second generation in his bloodline to stand upright. 
My, okay. my uncle was an actual chimpanzee. <laughs> yeah, <see? laughs> That's why Kyle throws his feces. <laughs> That's mentioned. a different reason. I just like it. <laughs> Man. As uh, you mentioned way, way earlier, being a, a food snob about uh, the tomato thing, is that your biggest food snobbery? Or do you have a couple of... <laughs> like, are there like foods that if you're served, you're like, tut, tut, tut. <laughs> I didn't know. Like, what, this I tomato wanna, is wrinkly. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, that shit back. Throw this at the chef for me. Yeah, dude. I, there is something that kind of grosses me out: is um, soggy bread in a sandwich. Ugh. Oh, mm. I don't think that's. Uh, I think you're very on point there. I don't think Disgusting. that's that's too yeah. ridiculous at all. It's gross. Yeah. No wrinkles on tomatoes, though. No, no. Unless I'm on LSD. Now, are you a crab or a lobster person? Hmm. Uh, a lot of work for either one of those. Uh, Wrong. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of work. That's interesting. I was like, if he says lobster, he has a problem with the work. If he says crab, he prefers the flavor. And then you're like, they're both too much work. Yeah. Michael, you've got to self-reflect on this. You didn't yeah. <laughs> Michael's <laughs> high as shit at Red Lobster. Like, what's even the point of I'm eating like, crab? Somebody please <laughs> bring me a steak. For the love of God. Hey, waitress. Yeah. Practice a little virtue. Crack this shit for me. <laughs> Get that meat out. Dip it in the butter. Uh, Man, I, I love I want crab right now. <laughs> I love people opening my shellfish for me. It is, I, I've only had it on cruise lines. That's the only place I go fancy enough for that level of service. But these guys are professional crab and lobster openers. And it's a, it's a joy to see. They got yeah, all I go to those cool, and I'm like... Uh, have you ever seen those videos of like a Chinese factory worker like frantically trying to remove the shrimp tails fast enough? That's them when I'm there on the conveyor belt. They can't get the meat out fast enough. I'm just <laughs> devouring <laughs> pound upon pound of crab. I think I think my most ever might have been eight pounds in a in a city. <laughs> eight pounds of crab. I What's I with the shells. I like Jesus. wouldn't go. I wouldn't eat for like thirty hours beforehand. I'd prep. I'd get ready. I live in Missouri, and so oh. I don't get good seafood in ever. I have to wait till uh, I'm like near the ocean. Where in Missouri? St. Louis. Oh, dude, I was in uh, Marshfield, Missouri. Oh, all right. Yeah. You know where that is? That's in like South Central, isn't it? Z way, way from near me. Springfield. Near Springfield. Oh yeah, the total opposite side, down by Branson. The, yeah. There, there are goofballs down there. We don't yeah. associate with those Missouri. Good move. Missouri inns. Uh, <laughs> Although we're, we're the weird. You ever go down to Bra to Branson for a show? For show, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. Don't they have like all sorts of fun, like Christian children activities? Like, like, uh, when I was a kid, I went to Branson a few times, and it was uh, the the thing I remember about it most was when I was like nine, my little brother was eight, and he straight up won a pie eating contest. He beat like <laughs> he beat like yeah. two adults who were up there. But one, <laughs> one, one one of the adults, no shit, did like that thing from a movie where he just like started eating it with like a fork like just ate a reasonable about a pie and then left because <laughs> i guess it was cheaper to join the contest for like eight bucks than to buy a whole pie for like 20 and so he did, he did that uh, and uh oh shit uh we lost I, sure. I think we lost his can you hear us are you there michael i've been waiting to uh to ask this it, it's about your initial lsd experience where you went from grieving to i guess the next stage and, and getting better you with me yeah okay so i've done ketamine and while i was on ketamine all my thoughts and ideas were free from like self-doubt self-reflection in a way and second guessing every idea and thought i had was a good one to me it, it normal me not on ketamine you suggest a business idea even if it's a good one i can tell you seven reasons why it won't work out and they're all legit but they might be conquerable you tell me on ketamine that like you know what this is the way forward and there's nothing about me that thinks good ideas are bad did you have a similar experience as you were trying to get past your grieving and guilt what was the high like? Like what? Because there were hours where you were. It, there's an in between. There's a grieving, thinking about taking the uh, the Robin Williams way out, as you described it, and then there's the oh my, 
life goes on, I can achieve a, a, a happier oh, state. It, it was, it wasn't, what was the it, middle? Wasn't, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. Okay. It's, it's completely different. This is, and this is, this is why we're having a, a difficulty here in this communication is because what I'm trying to suggest is like, it wasn't a, a, a graduated, like I didn't come from this level and go to a graduated up and filled up and now I'm complete. It was a completely different experience of that of life a, a, a completely a diff different experience of life okay so it, it almost sounds like it wasn't something you thought or dreamed or did during the high but for some reason you came out of it reset maybe when when I was on, when I was on this trip, it was like several hours of seeing the world as if everything were harmonious. And regardless of the pain or the difficulty of any particular thing everything just fit exactly the way that it was supposed to and i fit as if i were a piece of fabric in this ever-changing pattern so to speak mm -hmm. now, everything everything that i'm saying is just a metaphor right it's just poetry trying to explain the inexplicable trying to explain what is really beyond words yeah because it's a you know, you're trying to explain the sensation of a psychedelic drug. Like, you know, it's it's going to be different for you and your feelings and the ability to articulate it than someone else. So different for everyone, I would guess. Like, it's, it's the same way that, like, unless unless like, the same like reason that you talk to people about hallucinogens or whatever. And it's about like, what did you learn? It's always so similar of like this vagary of. I fit in. It's so right. secure and this, and it was just so right. And it's like, that sounds like everybody else. Cause it's, you know, they, they don't, they don't have the words, I guess, to articulate it. And that's why the good hallucinating stories are always like, I saw a dragon and, a, and there's like a narrative structure because then people can kind of carry along with it. Oh, that makes sense to me. Oh, you saw a, a leaf turn into a, a scary bug and it flew away. Whereas yeah, everything just kind of gelled, man, doesn't really fit unless I guess you have the requisite experience of, LSD. And even then, Kyle has never had that. And some of my other friends who've done it haven't. And so that kind of plays into what Woody's been saying, where it really does have to do with the setting of it and your mindset going in, where if you're trying to be silly and have a fun time and watch movies, that's what you're going to get more likely than not. If you are going into it because you're traumatized from a, a horrible life event, then you're probably going to fixate on that. And that is going to be the driving force of it. And that's coming like that's what I assume. I don't do hallucinogens. I did a small amount of mushrooms in college, but not even enough to like do you know your dose? get a real experience. I don't I have no idea. My roommate uh Someone gave me some off of you. his desk. It was yeah, all chopped as, up. As far as like like the way it, it, it yeah. the way it uh, I experienced it, it felt to me like if I had tried if I had start if I'd went in with the idea that I was gonna focus on a thing then that would have been the focus. And I felt like I could change gears at any time while I was high and, and, and start thinking about things. And I could have gone to some dark place that was like scary or mean or, or um, you know, maybe not healthy. I don't know. Maybe maybe it would have been healthy to, to, to go there and like destroy my, um, what, what, what were they talking about? Um, ego. Yeah, like ego death or whatever. I'll, I'll hang on to my ego. I like it enough. Yeah. Cool guy. Um, but I really just wanted Fantasia to be cool and wanted that, like, that camaraderie with my buddies. And man, food tasted good. Man, that was the best donut I've ever had in my fucking life. And to be fair, it was a real good donut, but still, it was <laughs> it was transcendent. I always we were... hear the stereotype that like eating on acid is the is like a a negative. People hmm. talk about the maceration, you know, just the munching of food in your mouth being disgusting to them. I heard someone tell me that mastication. Oh. What did I, I said? Maceration. <laughs> you're close. You're close. We were going to let you slide. It's okay. At least I didn't <laughs> masturbation. Everyone, yeah. But yeah, I didn't, halfway. But I didn't have that experience at all. I just found that donut to be delectable. Just the most yeah, see, I was the on the... I was working. Like, I got... 
when I listened to Michael's story at the start, I was almost envious because like when I was working out issues, I didn't have a good reason. I feel like there was almost like a, look, I'm bummed. What's your big problem, Woody? Well, you know, like it's winter and um, I don't deserve to be down is how I felt. That's right. Like, like, That's right. And uh, you, on the other hand, earned it. So, like, but me? But it's the same thing. It's that same feeling of guilt. And because at the root, it's this it's this spiritual issue, dude. Doesn't have anything to do with circumstances. Well, yeah, I was with you till the end. Like, it just... In your case, I think the circumstances. Look, I mean, it's going to change. There. But, dude, we both felt the same gnawing, though. Mine was more acute, but yours is. Yeah, I feel like I'm stealing valor to just agree with that. Like, yeah, like, right. You know, like, like, I don't deserve that. What do you mean? Like to compare his pain or his discomfort to yours? I'm not, I'm not so comparing. I'm not, but I'm he not, is. For him, uh, yeah, to yeah. His, yours is what he's saying. He feels like he's. He's, but why uh, compare? We're we're just saying that this is annoying. That we look. This isn't a competition. We're we're both human, man. We're both like just because you didn't have a traumatic experience doesn't mean that you don't feel this gnawing. Is what I'm saying. Man. Yeah, yeah. But I do struggle with thinking. But I don't deserve to feel no, this. But gnawing, see, that's right? the thing. Like, but see, that's the thing that you're. That's the that's the very gnawing. Is this feeling of guilt that you ought to not do something <laughs> that you are doing? It's it's no different. Don't fixate on the circumstance. Don't, don't forget. Don't think about my this tragedy. Focus on the fact that we're both human and this thing that hey something ain't right. That's, yeah, and there's a and unqualified there's no scientist in me that's like, oh, do you feel bad? Well, that just means your serotonin uptake re inhib inhibitors are no, yeah. your serotonin uptake receptors are working too hard, and now you've got no serotonin in you, and you need that to. That theory was do, not that was yeah. made up. Yeah, that that, was, did that didn't turn out to be real. Qualified scientist, I, I prefaced it. Whoa, Michael, are you saying SSRIs are wildly overprescribed with a lot of negative side effects? <laughs> that's that's I would, crazy. I would never <laughs> say such a thing. No, I don't think there's um, mountains of evidence for that. <laughs> I don't think there's absolute mountains of evidence that people are. I know I'm out of my depth, but because uh, uh, I just know people that they've helped, but that doesn't mean they're not overprescribed, also. Um, but yeah, yeah. So this is one of the things that I struggled with was feeling like I didn't deserve to be struggling in the first place, and then that just cre now I have two irony. problems, and That'd then it just irony. it's recursive to where I have infinite problems. Of course, mm. yeah. Yeah, I totally get see, that. The problem is begun with the question. You're the one that brings the problem with the assumption. I do that. Yeah. Um, but then the ketamine itself was, was it? So, dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Go ahead. And this is, look, there's a certain reluctance. Gosh, this is going to be hard to take. And I don't know if this is the right audience to tell you, but I'm just going to tell you anyway, and you can make what you will of it. Mm -hmm. There's a certain reluctance that human beings have of the narcissism that is natural to being an individual not i'm better than you but i am an individual and i don't need to agree with you on everything it's real hard for people especially in this competitive society real hard for a person to figure out how to be a person in the midst of a society it's tough and people people feel ashamed or embarrassed and i just don't think there's any they don't need to i think it's uh i think that's a uh unnecessary ill of this unspoken expectation of conformity and people don't want to do it people don't want to people don't want to they want to be themselves to, to get them to go where i was trying to yeah it's just hard know. with a lot of like psychedelic people to get them going in the direction you want because a huge amount of it is saying learn to accept the things you can't control that's the overwhelming majority of core it of seemingly the, the core yeah. of it and a lot of it so he'll say that and it's like you can see all three of us be like yeah that's that's true like anything that helps you accept the things you can't control if you're five eight and you want to be six four you got to learn to accept that like that's that's a fact you'll be happier when you do but 
then it gets backfilled with so much stuff like everything everything is reality and nothing is is extant other than your uh internal human self and it's like okay well what is my internal human self if not an amalgamation of my thoughts and beliefs my 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 biggest one was he was like everything's fine there's nothing wrong with anyone everyone needs to understand that and i was like and the first part is the first step is doing drugs with me in costa rica that's <laughs> like I, 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 come on if anybody wants to join him for drugs in costa rica his link is down below um i i i I bet you'll have a hell of a time. I'm kind of tempted. Uh, Maybe your yeah, wife I mean, spotted a gun. Go. Maybe you don't know where it is. Maybe you <laughs> yeah. just learn to accept that. <laughs> just yeah. just learn to accept that. I want somebody to arrive like a... When has a gun and threatens to kill your kids, you go, <laughs> that's life. <laughs> that's I that one. Life throws you a curveball. Go ahead, Kyle. At what point would he not think it's a good idea to leave the country and come do drugs with him in Costa Rica or whatever. Dear Jonathan, what, or whatever his name was, Michael, was it? Michael whatever. Griswold. Michael. Dear Michael, my house is currently on fire. I had thoughts of calling for assistance. My children are inside. And I realized <laughs> nothing really matters. When would we head to Costa Rica? Like, like, <laughs> like at what point should we actually focus on what's going on? Like, like, I, yeah. That one was a fire. It was a fire in the kitchen. The barn's burning down in the backyard. The children are about to be killed. <laughs> yeah and then like don't like saying like every like all of this stuff is nothing it's and meaningless all the time. it's it's just thoughts that's woody you're in your own head and this and that is you know it so much of it is just internal like just act not even internally externally contradictory where it's like everything is just you in your head and nothing matters but it matters deeply that you what improve your ability to see the world in this way and so it's your your internalization of information is wrong and that needs to be fixed. Well, that's a mechanism by which you you garner information like saying that it doesn't make sense. Nothing's I mean, wrong. I that's why you... like I, I hear how it doesn't make sense. Like it's not lost on me. But here's a guy whose life mission, the focus of what he has going on seems to be inner peace. And you say accepting what you can't control. That's it kind of. But it. it I don't know if it, I think it's accepting everything and embracing peace is what he's trying to do. And that is sort of compounded or connected to this idea of psychedelics, which are very difficult to explain. I don't know anyone who's gone on a trip and accurately tells somebody else what his experience was. Mm. You, know, the, the, you can get little elements of it, like your colors changed or, you know, one time I did mushrooms and I found campfire smoke, a little purplish and endlessly fascinating i'm a little no, fascinated by smells smoke are more first place but it was on a whole new level where yeah. this smoke was just all i needed to to mm -hmm. enjoy my night um <clears throat> but by and large people don't describe their trips very well and yeah. that combined with this idea of accepting inner peace being so paramount was a tough message to deliver mm. it is but it's and i like i understand i guess the inner peace thing that he's trying to put forward it's just and why where yeah, there's given a his weird, background why he would be like that of course yeah yeah like 100 well, i get why he like is that way and everything and why that works for him it's just what i really want to i'm sorry go ahead. oh no no no. It, I, there's nothing meaning like just telling someone like nothing none of this matters it's all meaningless and then going into how important it is to change your thinking in regard to these things is odd I, I think we need to circle back and and just realize that we're trying to pick apart the, the these barely cogent arguments arguments from someone who wasn't sober and hasn't been sober in years you know oh you think but, he yeah. was high i, I uh, yeah. you're smoking weed it, while we watched him and he microdoses daily so he's high on at least two drugs right then having a conversation to, with yeah. us that and, speaks to my lack of observation skills <laughs> yeah oh, you couldn't tell he was a little no oh, yeah. i i may i, I also actually saw said, Oh, go ahead, Kyle. I'm I did a mean thing. I may have referenced the fact that he was outside a building and that there were birds and dogs. I was there barking. for that. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I was, yeah. there for that. I, I was okay. like, this situation needs a little soothing. I, 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 was looking at, <laughs> I was looking at you when I said it. I wanted to see how you reacted. I knew Taylor was going to love it either way. But I was see what you, and I was like, oh, what he's trying to chill things out. He doesn't know the guy called me smug. He'd be with me if he heard that. <laughs> uh, dude, I, so I, I asked who the guest was and I came a little prepared. Like, all right, I, I knew what he was all about. I was like, 
should I microdose for the show? Just a thought, <laughs> yeah, just wish, to like man. join him. Taylor's join background him. would have fucked me up. What is what is happening there? You're going from purple to blue. Well, you it, are changing yeah, colors, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's one is of those it? lights that that yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it rotates from purple to pink. It's a light. It's literally not. It's just auto correcting to from it's changing colors. You're right. There's no there's no color. Oh, it's my it's uh, the PC light. That's what it is shining back yeah. there. The the under the, I oh. did not I forgot I had that thing. Yeah. So your computer is was morphing its RGB and that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. I thought it's probably it was, a way to turn it off. I you thought can, it was really planned. Taylor was like, you know what? For it. New me, new background. We're gonna we're gonna get special tonight. We're upping our production quality. I'm not gonna show up on camera with a bunch of trash in the background like some loser. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. That's what I was doing as <laughs> I was putting in the hours. You know, making yeah. sure that my PC was angled correct that on that PC. Show up with I'm winter sure clothes that need to be stored. <laughs> I bet you've got a super good motherboard. I bet you've got all sorts of software that oh. could. Uh... Thank you.